So good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the spring open house for Niagara College. My name is Elisa Blow, and I am one of the recruitment advisors here for the college, and I'll also be your moderator for this afternoon's session. The session you're joining us for right now is OTA PTA, and we have uh, one of our teachers here, a member of our faculty, as well as a student who we'll introduce in just a moment. But before we get started, we have a couple of little things that we need to go through as far as um, housekeeping is concerned. We'll start off first with our land acknowledgement. Niagara College acknowledges the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe people, many of whom continue to live and work here today. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and is within the land protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Today, this gathering place is home to many First Nations, Métis and Inuit people, and acknowledging reminds us that our great standard of living is directly related to the resources and friendship of the indigenous, indigenous excuse me, peoples. So that's our land acknowledgement for Niagara College. And now we'll get into some of this presentation for you. And again, with some, some little uh, tips and tricks for today's session. So the deadline for uh, acceptance of your, uh, to accept your offer of admission is May 1st of 2021. Many programs are still open for fall, winter, and spring intakes. If you have any questions throughout the session, and this is important, if you have any questions throughout the session, please put them in the Q&A feature on Zoom and we'll be able to answer those for you after we're through the PowerPoint uh, section of today's session. You can also use the live chat feature at the bottom of our website if you have any additional questions. Uh, we'll be using the chat here too uh, if we want to pass along information to you, for example, email addresses uh, or any links that you may need. You can join us on the Niagara College website and book your Niagara College exploration session or you can book a virtual tour online for whatever time works for you. You can explore our student services uh, with our Ask Me Anything drop-in sessions and speak live to staff from Niagara College throughout the day. And all of these sessions are being recorded. So if you want to share this session with maybe a family member or a friend or somebody who you think might be interested in this course, uh, all of the recordings will be available online after the event. So we are recording live right now. And uh, finally, of course, please enjoy today's session. We want to give you some updates about the fall term as well, because there's lots of questions here. We do have a student on today as well who can speak to uh, some of her experiences on campus. But as Niagara College closely monitors the current and projected public health measures, well, uh, vaccination rates and other factors, a significant increase in on-campus learning is anticipated for the fall 2021 term. So fingers crossed there. The health and safety of our students, staff and faculty remains a top priority. Courses and program elements that return to campus will comply with all public health measures and directives. Updates will be provided regularly as information becomes available and the delivery status for all programs will be posted in May. And this is an important link for you to follow on our uh, Niagara College website as well. The most up-to-date and accurate source for information regarding college operations and program delivery and COVID uh, protocol is available on our website. That's niagaracollege.ca forward slash COVID-19 forward slash. So that's where you'll be able to get the most up-to-date information. So now, without further ado, we're going to introduce our faculty for the day today. Uh, Tanya Otten is here with us from the OTA PTA program. And we also have a student with us, Brianna, who will join us and talk about her experiences on uh, with the program on campus and online learning. So welcome, ladies. And Tanya, you can take it away. Thank you very much, Elisa. And yes, welcome all of you who are attending now and all of those that may view this recording later on. I am Tanya Ahn, as previously mentioned, 
the placement coordinator for the Occupational Therapist Assistant and Physiotherapist Assistant Program. We have five faculty members on our team. Um, Kelly Martindale is our program coordinator, who is a physiotherapist by trade. Jody Steele is a physiotherapist professor as well. Sarah Cole is an occupational therapist professor. And Julie May, who is our lab tech and facilitates the field placement seminar course. So welcome, and I look forward to debriefing a little more about our program. And... Oh. Try again, Tanya, it's okay. Let's see here. There we go. All right, our agenda for the day. So we're going to go over a program overview, placement and career opportunities, and scope of practice. Our program overview is that we are part of the School of Allied Health, which is in the Welland campus for Niagara College. We are part of an amazing team there, and this program is a two-year diploma uh, with four terms, so we do not run through the summer. We are also accredited by the OTA and PTA Education Accreditation Program, and this is necessary as more and more employers are um, only accepting hires from accredited programs. So we have just recently been, been re-accredited last year, and there is an accrediting body that goes throughout Canada and monitors and evaluates the OTA and PTA programs across the country. The admission requirements must be including an Ontario Secondary School Diploma with an English, any grade 12, C or U, and biology, a grade 12 C or U, or a grade 12 U, as well as the completion of the Health Occupations Aptitude Exam, which is a general exam that evaluates general science, math, problem solving, communication, and many other areas where you um, get tested and this court, this aptitude exam is used for many other health programs as well. So for the program overview, we have a number of courses which uh, fills the semester quite full, but our professors ensure the success of their students and we also have peer, peer tutoring um, opportunities for you um, if the courses uh, become too heavy. Now, the courses also build on each other, which is a, an amazing way uh, to refine and develop the skill set that you gain in first year as you continue on in second year. And you'll see that as I read through the course overview. So in the fall term of your first year, you have anatomy and physiology, language and communication, basic clinical skills and theory, rehabilitation concepts across the lifespan, Introduction to Occupational Therapy and Physiotherapy, Functional Human Anatomy and Movement, and Introductory Psychology. In the winter term, so January to April, you have Clinical Documentation, Clinical Pathology 1, Therapeutic Foundations for the OTA and PTA, Field Placement Seminar 1, Introduction to Interprofessional Education, Field Placement 1, and a General Education Elective. And the courses that you may choose from are posted online at some point in the term. In the full term of your second year, you have Ethics and Professionalism, Clinical Pathology 2, OTA and PTA Therapeutic Skills 1, Field Placement Seminar 2, OTA and PTA Therapeutic Skills 2, Field Placement 2, and a general education elective once again. Now, as you see, the number two behind these courses means that you're building off of the courses that you took in the previous term. And your final term is January to April, your winter term, professional issues related to the OTA and PTA, OTA and PTA therapeutic skills three, trends and issues in rehabilitation, rehab across the lifespan, therapeutic skills four, Field Placement Seminar 3, 
and Fields Placement 3. All of these courses are prerequisites to continue on to the next term and are all um, very related to one another, as well as the lab classes are very hands-on, which is amazing. And we'll talk more about that as we get to the lab. We have an amazing laboratory set up in the Allied Health Wing on the second floor where we have state-of-the-art equipment. And all of our equipment is very up-to-date and as the professors monitor current trends in the community. So the equipment includes um, lifts for the transfers. We have a kitchen with various assistive devices. We have uh, modalities such as TENS, and shockwave and laser, therapeutic, and the list goes on. And all of these things you will learn to use throughout your two years in lab classes, culminating in a consolidation exam where the professors take all the learning you've used and apply it in your final exam. Now, talking about placement. So this is the area where I work in. I have been employed for three years as the placement coordinator and also am an alumni from this program uh, and I graduated in 2016, which makes it a pretty special environment to be working in as I now work alongside my professors and assist current students to be employed in the job that I love. So in the past, I have been employed in home care, uh, long-term care, and in the hospital setting. So as I facilitate placements, I also have actually worked with a number of the supervisors that I am sending the students to. So in the first year, you have one placement. This starts in January. In your second term, this is a six day, six week, sorry, one day per week introductory placement where you have um, a brief overview of skills where you get introduced to the community partners and you can go into either hospital, clinic, or long-term care environment. And it's a great way to start beginning this, to practice the skills that you have learned in your lab classes. In your second year, you have two placements in the fall term, two placements in the winter term, and one consolidation placement. So by the time you graduate, you will have experienced six different placements, which is absolutely amazing as you reach out to different community partners and you build up your reference list so that when you when it comes to the time to be applying for jobs you have a number of people that already know you know your skill set and can also be a great reference as you enter the workforce now in the otpt world there are a lot of people who know everybody else so if you are having a placement in long-term care, um, there's a good chance that the physio in St. Catharines knows your current supervisor in Niagara Falls, et cetera. So the placements are actually a fantastic way where we actually call them um, live job interviews, where you build your resume, you build up your community partnerships, and from there, you become more and more employable. So we have two different types of placements. We have traditional and role emerging placements. The traditional is under the direct supervision of an occupational therapist or physiotherapist, where you are practicing in traditional environments, such as long-term care, clinic, hospital, etc. The role emerging placements are a relatively new addition to the program where you also go into non-traditional environments such as home health care areas or more community living areas. And you apply your OTA PTA skills in new environments, creating potential new job opportunities. And we have actually had OTA and PTA students been hired in these role emerging environments, which is very exciting. Now with the role emerging placements, you are also connected with one of your professors, typically Sarah and Kelly, where they become an off-site supervisor. So if you have any OTPT related questions, you have somebody that you can connect with. So in the fall, you do six week placements, two days per week. And then in the spring, so in the winter term, you do five weeks 
with three days per week. And as you continue through the program, it culminates you increase the amount of days you're on placement. So you consolidate in May with a final full-time placement where you have the opportunity to become at your most independent level as you interact with clients and patients on a daily basis. For career opportunities, there are a variety. Children's treatment centers, so the most common one in our area is the Niagara Children's Center, which is located across from Brock University. Clinics, there are the widespread and many in the Niagara region. Community care agencies, community health centers, hospital, so we are affiliated with Niagara Health, which has five hospital sites, and all of them have accepted students in the past and currently are accepting students, where you have access to every unit in the hospital, um, which provides a great way to experience the hospital setting. And we also have long-term care facility partnerships, including the Niagara Regional Homes and also private long-term care homes, mental health facilities, seniors, residents, and finally schools, which is an up-and-coming employment opportunity. Now I'm going to introduce you to Brianna McCabe, who is a current second year student, and she'll be able to speak a little bit more about the program and also her experience. Thank you, Brianna. Thank you, Tanya. Um, my name is Brianna McCabe, and I'm a current student in the Occupational Therapist Assistant and Physiotherapist Assistant Program um, at Niagara College. Um, I do have a background in kinesiology from Brock University. Um, so this was a second post-secondary opportunity for me um, at the college. Um, so I'll start off kind of just by going through these four questions that are listed on the PowerPoint slide. Um, so why I chose to come to Niagara College, um, what I love being, what I love about being a student at Niagara College, how I, I feel supported by the staff at Niagara College and the services that are available. And then I'll speak to the transition to online learning and experiential learning opportunities that I've had. So um, I chose to come to Niagara College um, after completing my kinesiology degree at Brock um, because of the amazing placement opportunities that were available. Um, I was really looking for a continuation of my learning and to build upon skills that I had gathered um, at my previous post-secondary um, with my post-secondary education. So the placement opportunities that were available was um, what drove me to come to Niagara College. I did grow up in the Niagara region in Niagara Falls. So it was a close place, it was close to home. Um, and I was really intrigued by the program. Um, something that I really love is that it's a really welcoming community. Um, when you come on campus, which has been a little bit limited to us this year, um, you will notice that everyone is so welcoming, so friendly, so happy and it's a really nice way to come into a post-secondary experience. Um, another thing that I really love is that the class sizes are small, so it isn't so overwhelming as when you're in university. Everyone will know your name. Uh, it might take a little bit longer because um, as you may know, um, we might not be good with names, um, but the community of your class um, and the small class size really builds a family atmosphere. Um, I would say that our whole class this year um, has become like a family and that's something that's really, really nice to see in post-secondary education. Um, I will also touch upon the beautiful lab that we have. Um, the equipment is amazing and it's really great to have that space for us to build our skills and continue to learn. Um, then I'll touch upon what I love being about a student. So. A lot of the things are similar to what I previously mentioned, but the atmosphere at the college is really, really great. And I think that um, at Niagara College, it is a very welcoming community. Like I said, it's family. And I think that that is really why I love being there because it, it makes me excited to go to school every day. I'm not worried to be there. I'm not, I'm not scared. It's a, a very open, open place to be. Um, then I'll touch upon support at Niagara College. So I will touch upon peer tutoring. I am actually currently a peer tutor for the program. So I'm 
healthcare tutoring multiple students that are in the first year program or the first year of the program. Um, and this is a really, really great opportunity for myself to be able to help those students, but for them to have an outlet, an outlet to ask questions other than um, having to communicate with solely the professors. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit intimidating as a student and having this opportunity for them to then connect with a student that has also completed the courses of the program um, and ask questions and get that guidance is really, really beneficial. Um, and I know that a lot of students have really enjoyed that. Um, as well as right now, we don't have complete access to it, but Learning Commons and all of the services um, at the school um, are always open and they're always available to ask questions. A lot of that's being done online right now, but when we are available at the school, um, that is another place for support at the college. Um, then I will touch upon the transition to online learning. So it might have been intimidating for a lot of students, even in the high school um, setting as you're coming into college. Um, I will say that it has been tough, but it's been manageable. The learning experience has been a learning experience for everyone, including the professors and the students, because we had to move essentially everything online last year for me. So my winter term starting actually about this time was put fully online. We weren't able to go into the school at all. Um, so all of our in lab courses were transitioned to online. Um, and it was challenging because we lost a little bit of those hands-on skills that we had. Um, but the professors have been really great in supporting us throughout throughout the process. They did implement um, online lectures that were face to face. So instead of just posting PowerPoint slides online or posting material, we do have check ins and we do have um, like virtual classes, um, which is really helpful that it hasn't the information just hasn't been placed on us to then self teach um, because that can be really overwhelming and really challenging for a lot of people. Um, but having those lectures in place and just their support through emails, through um, you could set up virtual calls with them if you needed a little bit more clarification. Um, so that kind of goes over my online learning experience. But if anyone does have any other questions, um, feel free to ask them in the chat. Um, but then I'll finally just go over a little bit about my placement experiences and I can just give examples of where I have personally gone on placement. So it gives you an idea of some options for you. Um, so definitely, as Tanya had mentioned, the there is a variety of types of placements as well as locations in which that you could be placed for your placements. Um, it's really, really nice and Tanya has done a nice job um, allowing us to kind of explore our avenues and in places that we may potentially want to have a career in the future. So they really try to place you in each of those different settings. So having a placement in the hospital, in the long-term care, in outpatient, as well as having a role emerging placement. So I personally have been to um, Hotel de Shaver um, in the outpatient department um, that's located um, across from Brock University as well near the Ch Children's Center and it's a rehab hospital. Um, I was placed in, at Niagara Orthopedic Institute, which is an outpatient clinic in Niagara Falls. Um, I did have a fully online placement um, last at the beginning of this year, um, just because placement opportunities um, and coming right out of the lockdown were very difficult for um, everyone to be placed somewhere. So I did do a fully online placement. Um, and that consisted of going through some modules, um, reflections, watching uh, some seminars virtually, and then reflecting on them. Um, and then I went to the Port Colborne Hospital in the inpatient department. And then I'm currently located um, at a chiropractic office um, as a role emerging placement. Um, impact health. So that just gives you an idea of where I've been on placement. And that is all I have to say. Great. Thank you, Brianna. You're welcome. So 
Moving forward, um, I also wanted to give you the opportunity to write down our program coordinator's email address. So if those of you attending have a pen and paper in front of you, you can just write down Kelly Martindale's email address. She is readily available and willing to accept any questions from any of you. And if she's not able to answer the questions, she will for sure refer you to someone who can. So once again, Kelly Martindale, physiotherapist, professor, program coordinator, this is her email address. And moving forward, you can email her any questions or concerns in the upcoming months. All right. Elisa, would you like to moderate? Sure. Okay, yeah. great. So yeah, we'll put that um, email address in the chat too. So anybody who didn't have anything ready in time um, can, can get it from there as well. So again, deadline to accept your offer admission, offer of admission is May 1st, uh, 2021. You can drop in um, to one of the student services ask me anything sessions if you want to speak to a live staff member uh, we're going to have recordings of these up available and from what i understand it looks like that will be mid week next week that these will be available and now we're going to open it up for the best part which is the uh which is um the chance to ask some questions. So we'll stop our share. You can see everybody here and uh, we'll open it up to our attendees uh, who are watching. Please, if you have any questions, type them into the chat, into the Q&A section. And while you guys are busy typing away, I am just going to put um, Kim Kelly's um, email into the chat. So you guys start typing away your questions. I'm gonna type away this email address. Yeah, and just to add to that, if you have a question, you can also refer it either to Brianna or to myself, if you would like to ask Brianna or myself a specific question, so. Super great. And I know you guys aren't that shy. So there are a number of attendees here. Um, and again, take advantage of this time to get to talk to a teacher and get to talk to a student. Um, uh, Brianna uh, spoke really well. Brianna, I want you to see if you can change your name there at the bottom to your actual name, because right now it says your name oh. is Tanya. So if you can change that to your name, that would be that would be really helpful just for videos so they know that Tanya didn't uh, duplicate herself. But we've got <laughs> our first question. So this question's from Holly and she says, could you explain what the role emerging placement is again, please? Yeah, so I can take that one. Um, the role emerging placement is when you are on a placement not under the direct supervision of an OT or PT. So it's not traditional in the sense that it, you are not directly underneath a therapist. Um, so Brianna is currently in a chiropractic office. So this is an environment where you are actually doing a lot of PTA skills. However, because your supervisor is not actually a physiotherapist by trade, we classify it as a rural emerging placement. Another good example is Hauser's. It's a home health care pharmacy in Dunville, and I believe there's a location in Hamilton as well. And here you work a lot with equipment, a lot of wheelchairs, a lot of assistive devices, gate aids, et cetera. It's a fantastic learning option where you really get your hands on the OTA side of things, although you're not directly under an occupational therapist. There are a few other areas. Um, we also have pioneer elder care homes where you're situated in um, an elderly care home where you help with feeding or um, some of the morning activities. And once again, you're not underneath an OT or PT, but you are definitely practicing uh, OTA, PTA skills in each environment. Um, a lot of these environments, if you find difficulty connecting to OTPT, um, a lot of it is an opportunity to really develop professionalism, communication, time management, um, and a lot of really important assets for employability. Um, another area is um, working underneath recreation therapists in long-term care homes. Um, a fantastic option is at Grandview Lodge in Dunville, where you are 
working under the Montessori framework, which is totally related to occupational therapy. And it's a, yeah, a really cool framework, but your supervisor is a recreation therapist. So um, I hope that explains it a bit. Super. Okay, great. We've got another question. So this question is for Abby. Um, she wants to know, if all goes to plan with cam the campus opening up in the fall, how many days a week can we expect to be on campus for lab and classes? Yeah, Brianna, do you want to touch on how many days a week you're there currently? Yeah, for sure. Um, so currently, now I am on lab or on campus for lab two days a week. So I'm there on Mondays and on Tuesdays currently. Um, if we were fully back on campus, um, you would expect that all of your classes would be in a class, like in a classroom, you would be on campus for them. And then you're typically in lab one to two days a week. Um, I'm not sure just because of all of the COVID restrictions right now, um, that's kind of hasn't been fully decided yet um, based on uh, just how things are going. Um, but right now we still are on campus right now, which is amazing that we're able to continue um, building our skills just for taking um, a lot of precautions. We're wearing full PPE um, in our labs right now. So we're gowning up, we're wearing gloves, we're wearing goggles. Um, so that's kind of what that looks like. Does that answer your question, Abby? Sounds good, Brianna. We'll wait to hear back from Abby and if she has any additional questions, but we've got more. Um, this one's from Faye. Faye wants to know, is the course open for international students? Hi, Faye. Um, yes, I believe it is. Um, I'm not sure what that would look like if the international student would have to transfer, um, but that's definitely something you can email Kelly and she'll be able to forward you the correct uh, corresponding personnel. Um, but yeah, absolutely. And that actually raises a good question as well for those out of town. So those outside the, the Niagara region. Um, currently with your consolidation placement, you are able to have the option to have a placement in your hometown. So currently we have a student from Ottawa. So I will be connecting with supervisors, clinics, hospitals, whatever she desires in Ottawa, and then she can actually move back home for the final five week placement. So those of you in Niagara, I place you here, um, but if you're out of town, I actually can accommodate that as well. We're definitely willing to get into discussion as well about that, so. That's actually a, a great leader into our next question, which is basically the answer you just gave. Are all okay. placements located in Niagara region? If you're coming from outside the region, are you able to find placements closer to home, like say in the Hamilton area? Yeah, so I can uh, expound a little bit more on that. So I do have a number of partners that I uh, regularly reach out to in Stony Creek, Hamilton, Grimsby, Beansville area, which can get you at least closer to Hamilton. Typically, we try to stay in Niagara, especially with Mohawk having an OTA-PCA program. Um, we let them have the Hamilton area for the most part, and then uh, we stay to Niagara. But I definitely have some partners that have accepted students from Niagara College towards Hamilton area, absolutely. Oh, super, that's great, yep, good stuff. Um, Actually, I have a question about this industry. Are you noticing, or do you think there's a trend moving upward uh, with this industry? Like uh, there'd be um, great career opportunities or maybe an abundance of career opportunities? Is this industry growing? Yeah, so as um, the placement coordinator, I get a number of supervisors also emailing me looking for students to employ. So I often am getting job requests recruitment request, can you please pass this on to your students, recommend students or alumni who are looking to hire. Now, um, a lot of employability tends towards um, part-time work. However, there are for sure full-time options out there. Um, since graduating, I would say I have always had a job. Um, I always was employed in the field since the month after graduation. And I feel like the opportunities have at least remained constant. Um, and also that is something that your placements are amazing opportunities for because you can 
Um, even if you start off casual, for example, at the hospital or in long-term care, you can have a zero-hour contract, but fill in on sick days and vacation time, and from there, either build up seniority in the hospital or um, obtain a part-time position as you are now an employee in the internal job posting. So my recommendation is accept the positions that you get because it will for sure open up to new partnerships and opportunities. Sounds like an industry that's on the upswing, which is great, right? Mm -hmm. Especially for people who are maybe um, looking to be retrained. Um, if we have any attendees here today that are say mature students uh, that maybe had some difficulties with the industry that they were in because of COVID, this seems to be at least a program that as Tanya mentioned, has a lot of opportunity and uh, I think she, her just what she said alone is great that she's never not been employed uh, since since graduating that's a that's a really big deal. So we'll leave it here. We still have uh, the session open for about 25 more minutes. Again, any of you who are in attendance, you're welcome to uh, post your questions here in the Q&A. If you have any extra questions, this is really your chance to get to talk to the teacher and get to talk to a student as well. Um, so we'll, we'll leave it for you guys to, uh, to continue to post your Great questions. You've been asking some really great questions. And Tanya and Brianna, if there's anything extra you want to speak to, go ahead. Yeah, actually, I have one more thought on the employability section. So I've actually had probably a handful of students that have already said, hey, my current placement just offered me a job. It's, on, it's in evening hours or on weekends. What do you think? Um, so already now they're being asked to uh, start work even though they haven't even finished the term full, like all the way to the end of um, the expected hours. Now um, that being said additionally we are a healthcare profession and with healthcare you know there's job security in that alone because people will always need healthcare services they will always need rehabilitation so it is absolutely um, a special environment where the there's always a role for us in the community. Okay, great. Here's another question coming in. Uh, on average, how many students are there per class? So I believe the, the program accepts 44 students per year. That is like the cap. Um, and that number can fluctuate based on how many applications we receive. Typically there's a long wait list actually to get into the program with such a small class size. But as Brianna mentioned, it's, a, it's an amazing learning environment where you get to know your peers. And with a small faculty, you actually get to know your professors very well as well as they teach a number of your classes. And you really um, get comfortable learning the skills that you have set before you. Yeah, and like Brianna said too, they kind of become a part of your extended family, right? Because it is such a small, such a small program or a small group of people. So you get that individual attention uh, that, that you deserve. I'll just add on that just a little bit. In lab, um, they typically are, like the class would be divided in two. So you even have a little bit more um, time specific with um, the professor learning those skills. Um, in lab, there is typically the professor as well as Julie, um, who is the lab tech. She's also an OT and PTA. Um, so she, they both would be in the class as well as um, the students. So it, just say your whole class was 44, that would be down to like 22 students in the lab, for example. Good stuff. Um, you were talking to Tanya about it being a competitive program uh, and that you, because we only allow 40, approximately 40, 44 students in the, in the program. Um, just what kind of grades uh, <laughs> are recommended to make sure that you get in to that top 44? Yeah, I think with most, most programs, they're pretty safe between 80 and 90 percent averages. Um, however, they look a lot at the HOAE exam as well. I, I believe the balance was the HOAE exam was 60 percent 
and your grades from high school were 40% um, that they look at. So uh, with the HOAE exam, there are also practice exams online, which I recommend you taking a look at. That way you can at least have a bit of an understanding what you're entering into. Mm. Good idea. I've got another question that's come into. How is the lab run? Uh, is it run as a clinic with patients or do you get to work on each other? Yeah, Brianna, you want to talk about it? Yeah, sure. Um, so the lab is run just with your classmates. So typically you have a partner, um, you would both uh, be working on that one plinth and then practicing skills um, on each other. Um, however, for um, our examinations, so our practicals that are in each of the lab courses, um, they are typically done on standardized patients. So um, there would be a patient that would come in, um, they would be instructed um, to ask specific questions based on whichever um, skill that you're doing. Um, and then you would be completing your practical on that standardized patient. Um, it's kind of more like a neutral environment you're going in, you're working on uh, per se, like a real life client rather than your friend in the class. Um, and then it's more real life. You're able to develop that rapport a little bit easier with them. Sorry, I'll, rapport is just like having a conversation with them um, um, a little bit easier than um, per se, like work, just working on your, your friends or your classmates. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So with the standardized patients, they're trained actors and then they are given a role to play for the exam. Now with that, um, the practicals can be a bit of an intimidating testing period, but with your placements, you get it to experience communication and practicing your skills on the community, right? So then when you enter your practical exams, it every time gets a little bit easier because you have practiced every day a placement, the skills necessary for your exam as well. Good. Now we've got another question. This one's coming for Brianna. And I was just going to ask you this question and then somebody else asked it. It says, uh, for Brianna, what is your favorite class and why? So I'll give you, I have two answers. Um, so I honestly really love anatomy and understanding how the body works. Um, it can be considered more of a challenging course. So your anatomy, physiology, and then your functional anatomy. Um, both of those are completed in the first term of the core or of the program. Um, and there's a reason for it <laughs> because you need to understand anatomy, physiology, how the body's working to then complete other skills that you're taught in the course. So completing a treatment program with a client, you need to understand those body parts and how they're working to be able to then complete treatment on them. Um, so I, I honestly really do enjoy um, just understanding how our body works because it's such a neat, um, a neat thing really. Um, but I will say that the in skills labs would be probably my top choice of class just because we do physically get to practice the things that we're taught. We're taught the theory behind them, but then actually applying them um, to our classmates and learning how to like execute those skills and complete treatment. I would say those are my top two. And what do you peer tutor? Uh, what pro classes do you peer tutor for? Um, I personally peer tutor for any course that I have taken in first year, um, including any that are in the OTA and PTA program or kind of the additional courses. So psychology or like uh, communications um, and then our lab courses. I think it's important to note too to the attendees here that peer tutoring is free, correct? Yes, it is. It is a, um, it's included in your tuition or your, your program. Um, it is an amazing, amazing tool um, for students. I personally did not use the peer tutoring when I was in first year. Like, I did not have a peer tutor, um, but I am a peer tutor now for the first years. And um, it's a really, really simple um, like platform, essentially you would go to like the learning commons or the library um, website. You would complete um, like an application, um, just saying that you're interested, which courses you would like to potentially have peer tutoring for. Um, you create an account. Um, I personally um, post my schedule for uh, the week 
Um, that could fluctuate a little bit just based on like testing and stuff. But as soon as my um, schedule is posted, um, the students have access to click on a time. Um, typically they're hour, hour long slots. Um, and then I'm just notified that an appointment has been booked and then we meet virtually. Now, how does that work for you as the peer tutor? So do you get extra credit for that? Do you get paid for that? How does that work for you? Um, I do get paid for peer tutoring. Um, so it is free for the students. However, I am reimbursed for the time, um, which is nice. Um, I personally don't do it for the money. I would do it even if I even if it was free. Um, just because I really like to help others. And it's something that I actually really enjoy is sharing my knowledge with them. Because sometimes um, when you're reading through slides, you're reading through lectures, there's some things that just don't click to you. And even sometimes asking the professor, sometimes it still doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You read your textbook, you're like, oh, I still don't get it. But sometimes connecting with the student, there's a different way that they can explain it that made sense to them. Um, so I find that I've come come up with a couple like tips and tricks that are really helpful for the students. So I really enjoy it. That's great, good stuff. Good stuff, girls. So we've got uh, 15 minutes left uh, for this session today. So again, for any of you who are in attendance, if you have any questions for uh, Tanya or Brianna, uh, now's your chance. And again, for those of you who maybe came in late or um, some of you who may want to share this presentation with some members of your family or some friends. Uh, this is all being recorded and it will be available on our website, I would say about mid to late, to late next week. I think it's going to take them just a little bit of time uh, to get them all compiled and then they'll, they'll be available for you to, to watch uh, online. So yeah, if you have any extra questions, oh, here we go. So this one is, uh, oh, is there a licensing exam once you graduate from the program, or is it just your diploma from an accredited program? Yeah, so it's only your diploma. As we are the assistant to the therapist, the OT and the PT are licensed professions, but we fall underneath their license. So their governing bodies are who they communicate with, and then we um, are underneath their license. So whatever skills they feel comfortable delegating to us, that's uh, the area of practice that we fall under. So we'll be leaving the session open for another uh, 13 more minutes. Uh, and again, any questions you have for Tanya and Brianna? The clock is ticking now. So, uh, but I think you guys have actually asked some really great questions today. I know I've been in several sessions already this morning, throughout the morning and into the afternoon. And this one's my favorite so far. Uh, this has been a really great uh, learning session. Um, and it seems to me as though this program and this career has a, a pretty great future. Absolutely. It's a fantastic career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's not, I think you had mentioned too, Tanya, at the beginning there, uh, something along the lines of, you know, that, or maybe it was Brianna, something along the lines of, you know, excited to get up and come to school, right? And it's the same thing when you're out there working as well, right? You want to find a career where uh, you wake up in the morning and you're not uh, like, oh, great, I got to go to work. You know, you're pumped and excited to get to go to work and, and, and use the skills that, you, that you've worked so hard for. Yeah, absolutely. And I know I mentioned the part-time opportunities that often arise outside, like in this um, in this program, like in the career path. So I work part-time at Niagara College, and I also am employed at Niagara Health in their hospital system. So for me, I have that excitement because I'm always entering a different work environment. Either I go into the hospital and practice the skills I learned and gleaned in my two years at Niagara College, or I enter the college and I actually can assist other students towards their career journey as well. And it's, a, it's definitely a good time. And the team is amazing. So it's, it's for sure a fantastic program. I think the other thing too that's important to note is that just be, when you're an alumni, you can still receive help as far as um, finding a placement and finding work is concerned too, correct? Yeah, and I've had a number of alumni 
graduates um, reach out to me as well for reference letters or for um, yeah questions as they kind of begin the interview process, like what do you recommend? What should I bring with me? You know, do I bring these certificates that I needed for all of my placements in college, or do I use them at home? And the, the team is always willing willing to support and help and ensure success. Okay, we've got another question that's come in. So are CPR and first aid done through the school or on our own time? That's done through your own time. It is a placement requirement. And um, if you're already looking into being certified in uh, standard first aid and CPR, HCP, so healthcare profession. Um, the recommendation I can give you now is ensure that the expiration date happens after you graduate. Um, but if you currently have the certificate just to monitor your expiration date and ensure that you restart. Um, they used to run a program at the college, but of course that's all changed with the coronavirus. So now everything is outside the college walls. Um, so yeah, St. John's Ambulance, Red Cross, any of those platforms are great options. Good, great. Oh. Okay, here we go. This is, this is a good one for you, Tanya. What's the most satisfying and favorite part of your job or this job in particular? Okay, that's a really great question. I think the most satisfying part is so the students, when they go on placement, they bring a number of evaluation documents. They complete these on their own and with their supervisor as a grading system. Um, and it is my responsibility to read through them. And the most cool experience is taking a first year evaluation and then following that first year student into the second year through their placement journey, reading their evaluation seeing their environments where they're thriving in and also watching them grow as they, you know, out of a grade of five, maybe receiving two or threes in first year. And then now they're receiving all fives and, you know, are very independent on their placement. So just closely monitoring their success in the program as I read through their evaluations. It's what about in your own career as a, in the field? What about in your own career as in the field? What do I love the most? Yeah. What's the most satisfying part of your job? Um, helping in hospital, yeah. Yeah, helping people for sure. Rehabilitation is, is a key component of life. And you live your life daily with all of this independence that you take for granted. And as soon as you enter the hospital with, you know, a required surgery or a new diagnosis or just failure to cope, you suddenly lose the independence that you took for granted all of those years. And now as OTAs and PTAs, we are providing them mobility assistance or um, different devices to help them dress themselves again after having a stroke or continue to feed themselves or, you know, hold their own cup because we found a cup that will work for their tremors with Parkinson's disease. Um, different ways to say, you know what, this is, this is who you are. Here's how we can help you gain your independence and how you can value your life as it is now. And we take them step by step through their rehabilitation journey. Super. That sounds like, it does sound actually like a great gig. I mean, I'm sure there are days when the people you're working with are extremely frustrated. They're frustrated, right? Because they lost their independence and things, things such as that. Yeah. But then, as you said, it's really rewarding too when you start to see them being able to to do things on their own again and gaining some of that independence back. Absolutely. And you're working under fantastic supervision, like the physiotherapists employed at the hospital, the OTs employed at the hospital and the long-term care homes. They know what they're doing, they love what they do, and they're they're there to ensure the success of their patients and clients under their care. Good stuff. So coming into the last five minutes, Brianna, anything you'd like to add before we wrap up the session today? I think that it's been a great session, honestly. Um, <laughs> the questions have been really great. So we thank you for asking those questions that we could help um, have that discussion and talk through some of those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of the questions that people have is 
right now is about how we're handling uh, courses in school during COVID, right? So having a student here to talk to that experience um, really is helpful. So because you're really the one who is who is going through this, right? And as you said, I think you made a good point when you said earlier too that it wasn't just you who had to make the adjustment, your teachers had to make the adjustment as well. So everybody, even, even me who is doing, this is, an, this is an unusual role, but it's necessary in the world that we are in now. Normally this would be something we'd be on campus and you guys would be shaking hands and meeting people. And this is the way we, we do it today. Yeah. Or at least hopefully for a little bit longer because <laughs> it sure would be nice to get out of the house. <laughs> Great, so if anybody has any extra questions, now's your chance, we're into the last uh, last four minutes of the session and then we'll be closing it off at 1.30. Yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone attending and I hope to see you next year. Mm -hmm. Those of you who are in attendance, you don't have to stay. If you've, you've answered it, we've answered everything we can for you, or if there's something else you need, actually do me a favor, Tanya, will you put your email into the chat, yeah. please? Uh, just in case um, anybody here does think of something uh, tomorrow and they, you know, we're looking for the answer to it that, uh, that you'd be able to get back to them directly, that would, that would be great. And again, for those of you without any remaining questions, you're, you're welcome to, to leave the session uh, for the day. You don't need to just sit around and listen to crickets with us. So, um, but we'll wait for Tanya to put up her, uh, there it is, her um, email address. And you may want to take note of this. Uh, so that you can reach out to Tanya if, if need be. But for those of you who attended today, and especially those of you who stayed right till the end and asked some really great questions, this has been a, a really informative session. Um, as I said before, I've, I've watched a few of these already today. This one's been very good as far as questions are concerned. So uh, it certainly um, bodes well for the program. Uh, Tanya, I think <laughs> you're gonna have a lot of people very interested in, in this course. <laughs> That's exactly what we like to hear. Yeah, good stuff. Alrighty, for those of you who are attendees, you're welcome to leave. I can see some of you going now, so that's great. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we're just going to stay on here for uno minute more, and then uh, and then we'll close off the session. But thanks again for joining us. <laughs>